And welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, y'all grab a seat, grab some popcorn, because I've got an incredible guest here today. She is just, she's one of those leaders that, is, that has been out there sharing some amazing content. And we're going to make sure we share her, her link to LinkedIn so that you can connect with her, because she's got some great stuff out there, and you really want to connect with none other than Shatoria Daniel. Did y'all give it up for Shatoria? Huh? <laughs> Shatoria, can you hear your fan club clapping? I hear it. I hear it's, it. I'll it's pretty it. amazing. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I'm honored that you joined us here today. Well, Shatoria, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Well, I am Shatoria Daniels. I'm an area vice president for Ram Partners, LLC. So um, area vice president is a fancy title name for a regional manager. That's what I am. So um, as I said, I'm the head cheerleader and the head therapist for <laughs> all of the properties. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And, you know, I hate I love, you know, I, I think a lot of us kind of get hung up on titles, whether it's district manager, regional manager or area vice president. But it really does. I think, you know, area vice president really does give some gravitas to, mm -hmm. you know, what you do, because as a regional manager, you you are there's so many facets to that role. And, and, right. and I, I admit I was a regional manager at one point in my career and. There is so much to it. So, I mean, you really mm -hmm. do have earned such a grandiose title because I think you you do so much, you wear so many hats and you do, as you mentioned, are a cheerleader for so many that uh, you're responsible for. So, Correct. so kudos mm -hmm. to you. Thank you. Well, you know, Shatoria, I love to connect with amazing leaders and peek behind the curtains to see what inspires these amazing leaders. And so mm -hmm. I reached out to you, Shatori, and I said, you know, hey, what inspires you? You came back with some incredible points, and I can't wait to, to chat with you about these. <laughs> but the first one, this was kind of like an umbrella point that you that mm -hmm. you shared with me. And I, it's, it was funny the way you wrote it because you said, what inspires me? Quick answer, people. People, yeah. And I love that. I think that's mm -hmm. so so outstanding that you recognize that inspiration can come from people. So I'd love for you to kind of just share a little bit more what that means to you. Why do people in general inspire you? Well, you know, with the multifamily industry, it's a people business. And when we forget that and get borrowed down into all of the reports and executive summaries and collecting rent, you forget the connection. And um, we're so, I don't want to say bogged down, but, you know, the tide has changed in our industry mm -hmm. to where, you know, there's all these processes and systems that we do sometimes can forget that people component. So um, I've had the wonderful opportunity to kind of get back to basics with the team that I have. We have all those things, you know, but um, I came in to Ram Partners where it was a change of tide for the regional manager position. Mm -hmm. So they were like, we just need to make sure they hone in and have those, um, the right things in place, you know? So yeah. we were able to just go all the way back to, are we doing the leads right? Are we talking to our folks? You know, just all of those little pieces that we sometimes yeah. forget. Yeah. And um, when you can still have folks come in the door saying, I'm looking for a home and you can provide that. I know it sounds corny and cheesy, but it's the truth. You mm -hmm. know, it's just, it makes you feel the warm and fuzzy inside that you gave somebody their home. And mm -hmm. um, I tell my team all the time, we're selling sanctuaries. We're not selling mm -hmm. apartments, we're selling sanctuaries. Mm -hmm. You know, so they want to be able to go behind the door because the world is crazy and give have some <laughs> You know, so yeah. Um, yeah. that really inspired me. We had a tornado to come through Little Rock at the end of March, March 31st, mm -hmm. and it was devastating. Mm -hmm. um, Little Rock is full of trees and, you know, Arkansas is just a beautiful state. Yeah. And yeah. there's areas to where that was full of trees and you drive by right now, you still see the blue tarps. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we were able to provide homes for a lot of those folks because my properties were super close. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. that even gave an extra element of, to see them trying to keep themselves together, their families together, that inspired me to do my best by them. You know, because that could be me. You know, we blink our right. eye and that could be you. So, um, yeah, people, people just, they're my thing. Well, sure. <laughs> and you know what? I, I love Shatori. I love you're speaking my language and how you're presenting this really resonates with me because one of my, one of my big components is people first, task second. 
And I love yeah. where you're, you know, one, you're getting back to the basics and, you know, doing the right things properly, doing them, you know, for the right reason. And it's just, once you get that component, then these these other things just really, they, they work, they end up working. If you get the people piece first, then all the other things will kind of fall into that. Right. And you brought up one other thing, the team. And that inspires you. That was one of your, your points. I'm gonna kind of jump around a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but you had mentioned that your team inspires you as well. So mm -hmm. tell us what that means to you. How does your team in, end up inspiring you? Well, if they don't do a good job, I don't look good, right? So <laughs> they're gonna make sure they inspire my paycheck, but no. Um, you know, property management can be really hard some days. You know, um, we live in a microwave society recently. They want instant gratification on all the things. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we have an entitlement spirit amongst people. And um, my managers really hold down the fort well. You know, they, of course they get, you know, they get rattled sometimes because sure. they hold people. But, you know, um, most of the time they stay grounded. You know, they always want to give their best. They're always trying to be innovative in what they do. And if they can do that, the least I can do is support them. You know, so um, Ram is third party managed. So, you know, I have the two headed sword. I call it the two headed monster. And, um, you know, but I tell my team, if you're doing what you need to do, yeah, I will be your barrier. Ooh. And my back is to my ownership group and my front is to you. So mm -hmm. I'll take every dagger that they send, you know, everything they're trying to make work. I will take the hit for you and then I'll make sure that you're good. You know, so if I can at least do that for them, then I know their support, you know, they'll do yeah. all yeah. the things, you know, because they, I'm taking that pressure off. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's just two handed, you know, if they're doing all they can and they're providing the best customer service, the least I can do is make sure they're okay. I mean, that's I the bare So yeah. that's what yeah. we inspire from. Yeah, then you, they keep you, you, everything up. So that's one less thing I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So there's two things that kind of popped down in my head as you were talking is, one is help me help you. So if you do the things that, you know, are, are the expectations, take care of the things that need to be taken care of, man, I will do, I will bend over backwards to protect you, to help you, to grow you, right. whatever the things you, you need, um, I'll do that. But it's a partnership. It's help me help you. Um, get there and and the other thing that kind of popped in my head is almost like a mama bear you're there taking yes. <laughs> care of you know you're there taking mm -hmm. care of you know your team you're protecting them from all the things they still got to grow and learn and you know grow through mm -hmm. what they go through but you're still there to protect them to you know to get to get to their goal to get to their right. their, their dream and everything and I, I I love that it's so neat it's funny that you said mama bear because that's the running joke with some managers of mine um, even ladies that I worked with in the past, even though we were just um, colleagues, you know, but uh -huh. they was like, oh, there go, Mama Shatoria popping through, she's gonna make sure you're good, you know, so. That's I love that it. That. Yeah. that is so cool. What an <laughs> you know, to have that kind of endearing title or that endearing reference is, is, mm -hmm. is unbelievable. And that proves that you truly care and people recognize that you care about them. Otherwise, you wouldn't have earned that that type of nickname or that type of reference. Mm -hmm. So that means you're doing something really, really well. So well, kudos thank to you on that. That's awesome. Thank you. I want to drop down. I'm going to save one of the point for last because for me, I think that's that's it's an incredible point. But this next one you brought up is integrity of mm -hmm. the industry and the profession. So unpack that a little bit more for us. What does it mean and how does the integrity of, you know, uh, the industry and the profession, how does that inspire you? Um, forgive the ring in the background if you hear it. I'm actually on a site today. So. Oh, okay. See, you're still working. Things. I'm still working, <laughs> so forgive that. And I can't get up and pick it up because it's, it's right. It's all good. <laughs> okay. Um, so integrity, um, it goes back to something that you said, doing the right thing. Mm. So um, in a former life, I worked for another great company called MAA, Mid-America Apartments. Mm -hmm. And their, one of their models was do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. And that has, and I've been gone from them for five years now six years mm -hmm. and that's still in the nowhere you know in the mm -hmm. discernment area and yeah. you know if i operate in the best light that i possibly can i'm being communicative even mm -hmm. if it's something you don't like and i'm being respectful that's the least i can do because that's what yeah. i want in return it's just like the golden rule treat people the way you want to be treated yeah and 
a lot of times, you know, we get bogged down in the business of things. And it's not just multifamily, it's all over. Yeah. We get um, bogged down in the business of things that we forget that is still dealing with someone's, for us, someone's home. You know, mm -hmm. this is the largest bill most of the time that they pay every month. It's our responsibility to treat them with the utmost of respect and integrity. That don't mean that they have to walk all over you. Now, if they get nasty, you can exit stage left. We don't mind that either. Right. You know, but we start off in that realm of making sure that we're talking to them in a way that we would want someone to talk to us about mm -hmm. an interesting situation. You know, we got people living in walls so close together, they hear all the noise, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, they work from home and it's inconvenient because this person's playing in video games to, you know, major things. Like I said, we had yeah. a tornado. Um, and the integrity piece really hit when we had to um, rehome a lot of folks within like a two week time frame. I had one property to lease about 22 units in two weeks, just tornado victims, not wow. in addition to what they were already dealing with. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had to move quick, you know, because mm -hmm. we wanted to make sure that they had good homes, but I told them we still have to operate in, in integrity and make sure their units are the best we can because they've dealt with so much, you mm -hmm. know? So it's just, like I said, I've always just been taught you do right all the time. Cause one, you never know who's watching. Yeah. Um, two, your name and your character is all that you have. That's it. That's all that you have. Um, yeah. As my dad says, a poor, all a poor man got is his credit. So that can be your character, <laughs> your integrity, or your actual credit score, you know? Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, those are the things that, you know, keep you humble mm -hmm. and it keeps you um, grounded and level to make sure that, you know, everybody's just doing the best they can. You just have to operate in integrity. Oh my gosh. Shatoria, that, that couple, one word that you said that really resonated with me that just popped in, that is responsibility. And I, I feel like a lot of us, we don't own our responsibility, what we've mm -hmm. been entrusted to and those things that we've been entrusted to, we have to steward properly. Right. And I love how you recognize that through integrity, that we, we've got to do all these things right. Even if nobody's watching us, we're still going to do things the right way. And I truly believe that that is such a powerful concept if you own that if you own that responsibility and you're stewarding it well you're you're going to be successful you can't help but be right. successful when you do it that approach so man i love i love how you're what you're sharing <laughs> is so good this is inspirational so shatoria the last thing that you you the point that you shared which i i so so like attached to is family Family mm -hmm. inspires you. And I, and I saved yes. this for last. This is like your first bullet point, but I just, mm -hmm. I purposefully saved it for last because I truly believe it is so foundational. So mm -hmm. unpack this, share why this inspires okay. you. <laughs> and what, is, what does family mean to you? Oh, family's everything. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all that I have at the end of the day. And um, there is twofold. So growing up, I was, given a great life. My parents did well by me and my brother. Um, if they struggled, we never knew. And, but I know the struggles of my father. You know, he grew up uh, very poor with, you know, lots of brothers and sisters. And me and him just had a conversation over lunch um, a couple of days ago, just about being, you know, what does success look like? And mm. success for you may not look like the same thing for me. And um, he's, so close to retirement, you know, he's been working since he was 14 years old. So to see daylight in, you know, and he's able to write checks for anything he want now to start off the way that he started. And, but he stays so humble and, um, and so gracious. And he's so grateful for that, that that inspires me to one. He always told us and my mom as well, she's done well, um, do better than us. We're good, but do better yeah. than us because we're just giving you the platform to leap, you know, we're, we're giving you this, uh -huh. we've opened up this door and we want you to just go through and create another door. Yeah. And, um, so knowing, um, his story and my mom just being that supportive rock that she is, um, inspires me because they've been married, um, 40 years. Um, and you know, and that's a success, yeah. you know, and that, that gives me the warm and fuzzy because I've seen somebody do it. So if they can do it, why can't I do it? Um, my 
husband is um, retired military. He was in the military for 22 years, and now he is a instructor for the government. He teaches hazmat. But um, he grew up pretty rough as well. And his thought is, I don't want to go back. I'm not going to go back. I have you and I have a, we have a son that's 13. And um, he said, my responsibility is to you two. So whatever I have to do, we're gonna all, I'm going to always make sure you're okay. Oh and gosh. for you to do that, the least I can do is meet you halfway. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the least I can do is meet you halfway. Yeah. So, you know, if he can get out of the trenches, so to speak, like my father yeah. and be successful, mm -hmm. then me living the life that I had when I was growing up, how can I not? How can I not? And then plus I have to show my son what hard words look like. You know, um, even though he has all the things and he is spoiled, um, he just needs to know where mama got the money to buy these yeah. things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, just knowing the history of the two closest men in my life yeah. helps me. And um, just being, you know, just a woman of color, I feel like it's a responsibility to show up in the world, right? Because that's my extended family. Mm. And, um, you know, and to show that, we're more than what some people portray us to be, mm -hmm. you know? So, and that's, that's my family as well. So um, it just all blends together, but those folks are my heartbeats, you know, um, from my mom to dad, my brother is super successful. He works for Blue Cross Blue Shield and um, he's married to a um, social worker therapist and um, they're, they're doing great. So we now have dinners and decide who's going to pay the check. You know? So <laughs> that's great. You know, we let daddy pay it anyway. But, you know, we always <laughs> present that we can at least get the tip, you know. You're right. Uh, so, yeah, just knowing that I've been taught to learn that in success does not have to look like a 7,000 square foot home and 12 cars in the yard and all that. Yeah. And success to us is making sure that my family's okay, mm -hmm. making sure that if I open up the refrigerator, I can make me a ham sandwich. And when I hit the switch, the lights come on. Yeah. And I'm not worried about a disconnect notice. And my folks are living and breathing and healthy and, you know, all the things, you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So um, if they can go out and bust their butt every day, the least I can do is do the same. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah, those Shatori are my people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shatori, I got goosebumps with you oh, sharing do your story. <laughs> so here's what really pops out to me is there's a couple of things. One is gratitude. And I, I recognize from how you talked about your, your your mom and dad, how you talked about your husband and your family, you're grateful for the examples that they have shared with you. And you you talked about something, you, you did a little example, which I believe is incredibly emotionally intelligent. And that is your parents' ceiling becomes your floor to grow from. <laughs> and you're doing the same thing for your kid. You're creating an environment, you're creating examples and circumstances for your ceiling will be eventually become your son's floor to grow from as well. So you're creating a leg, your, your parents started this, but you're continuing this legacy of growth mm -hmm. above and beyond whatever, you know, potentially could have done without that. And right. it's just so... I so need, like I said, just goosebumps from you sharing the story because I, I believe, truly believe family is is one of the most incredible things uh, mm -hmm. to to be inspired by and to be blessed with something like what you have and the gratitude that you have from it, the ceiling, the floor. There's there's no stopping you, Shatoria. There's no stopping your family. You. And there's no stopping the people around you that are, are aware of your incredibleness that there's nothing that they can't do either. So, Shatoria, we, we are at the end of our time. I could talk to you for hours. It's, it's <laughs> so great just chatting with you. But before we wrap up, I'd love for you to share a closing thought with us. Um, just thank you for the opportunity to speak and chat about this. Um, it's always a little nerve wracking. Like, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Um, but you made it very easy, seamless, and comfortable. So I thank you. Um, you know, and just anybody that is watching, especially if you're in the multifamily industry, just know that it's bigger than just your property. This is a trillion dollar industry that we contribute to the economy and your 
asset managers, not property managers. You're managing multi-million dollar sites. If you can get that in your head, you will know exactly what you need to do all the time and be right by people and then still answer the phone when you're actually on site. Because you're weird in the background. I yeah. love it. No. <laughs> I love it. You know what? I'm going to call that opportunities calling if you follow Shatoria's advice. Yes. Guys. You always have a job. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Shatoria, thank you so much for joining us today you're on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you on the next episode. Okay. Thank you.